Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, episode 124. As usual, I'm Shane and I'm joined by Connor, Mike and Amalith. How are you? Howdy. Hi. Hello. Very good, very good. Thank you for asking. So this week, we're going to just talk about some random stuff that we've encountered that seems interesting. We'll see how this goes. Uh, first, before we get into that, um, myself and Amalith have some uh, event announcements that we want to shout out. So Dublin Maker is happening Saturday 31st of August and Sunday 1st of September 2024. So it's always a really fun event. It's for techie, makery type people. There's all sorts of stalls there, uh, food trucks, etc. It's a really nice weekend. We actually had a stall there several years ago uh, with the Dublin Linux Group. Um, to the best of my knowledge, it's free of charge uh, unless you're a commercial business. So definitely worth checking out. It's it's a lot of fun um, hanging out there uh, for, for the day or two and, you know, meeting all sorts of people and having a laugh. And uh, yeah, it's just a really nice weekend. So uh, check it out. That's happening in Richmond Barracks in Dublin on the weekend of the 30th of August. 31st of August, sorry. Amalith, uh, Fossey, tell us what that is. It's a free and open source software conference in Portland, Oregon. I'll be there August 1st through the 4th and mostly hanging around the JMP booth. So come say hey if you see me. So uh, first of all, I'm going to go to Connor. He put a link in our chat uh, about a, a Linux laptop uh, with a Snapdragon X Elite processor at Computex. Um, so tell us about this. So everyone is aware that um, Apple have gone completely arm and so that, not news to anyone, but that has caused the, uh, you'd imagine the leading competitor, which have been uh, Snapdragon, who Snapdragon does Qualcomm with their Snapdragon la- lineup, does everything arm. So maybe they, they were caught unawares or maybe they had something, some internal project that were they're working on and Apple kind of gave them the kick up the arse that they needed in order to um, bring it along a bit further or maybe go back to the to the drawing board and make it more powerful than they were going to make it or something like that. But they have been partnering um, and announcing the Snapdragon X Elite and pretty much all of the marketing has been around uh, like Microsoft and Windows, like Windows on ARM and all of this stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be another locked down platform. But um, a, a recent announcement is apparently there was a prototype um, tuxedo computer uh, at Computex 2024. Um, potentially, uh, will be uh, you'll be able to run Linux on the Snapdragon X Elite, or this computer will be running Linux on the Snapdragon X Elite. I do not know any more details than that, but it looks uh, quite good in terms of the hardware spec. The link will be in the show notes. So uh, we don't know how locked down is it going to be. Is it going to be a very specific build of the Tuxedo OS, which is based on Ubuntu, that will be running on it? Or can you just like wipe it and put anything that you want on it? Those kind of details are not really out yet, I suppose, until it's out and publicly available uh, on sale and people can do testing on it. But um, at least it's be Linux running on an ARM computer that isn't just a small um, Raspberry Pi, something that is less powerful. And this could potentially be a rival in terms of performance as a MacBook or certainly closer than obviously running something like a Raspberry Pi uh, powered powered device inside a a laptop, which people have done before. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly interesting to have apple level device apple level performance and potentially linux running on it other than the fact that buying a macbook and running a zahi on it which mike obviously does uh this could be a bit easier because uh according to the article from lily putting qualcomm are actually indicating that they will support that they will bring the support of all these processors uh, for the snapdragon x uh to the mainline linux kernel so that means oh. that uh, I don't know what else is what else maketh a, a, a computer outside of the chipset. So, but as long as inside, as long as the chipset is supported and all the other peripherals are supported, that would mean that you could actually install distributions like you install in Raspberry Pi. Now I see. So that would actually be easier than getting uh, Linux on the Macs because on the Macs it takes a dedicated team of Asahi Linux who 
basically reverse engineering a lot of things and so on. I see two hurdles there. One, if it doesn't take on Windows and that's a possibility, then uh, Qualcomm won't bother. Possibly they will make a server line of uh, ARM chipset because it's doing very well there. But if if Windows is not pulling the market towards ARM, if people are not buying Windows PCs with ARM, they'll probably not make a Gen 2 because why would they? And uh, secondly, then the problem for wider adoption is obviously applications. That is also a problem on the Windows side. So I don't know how good gaming is on Windows on ARM. And gaming is like massive, uh, massive amount of people who use Windows use it because that's how you play games. So then uh, I assume that Microsoft's own office works, but then there's a lot of other things that are very popular on Windows that will have to be ported or ensure working on the, not on the platform for the platform to be successful. And on our Linux side, I am a bit of a uh, niche user because for me, Asahi works well. Uh, the things that don't work, I don't necessarily need. And I can use, and all the applications that I require are actually working. But I assume there are, again, gaming, for example. I don't game on this MacBook. The little play, f- f- the few games that I play, except for Zero AD, which works very well on the MacBook. But on everything else, I would use my uh, Intel Linux uh, laptop. So it's going to be about Microsoft successfully creating an ecosystem and all the people who, create, who make up Microsoft Windows ecosystem to successfully recreating that on ARM, because so far they haven't. And it's, so it has to be good enough for Qualcomm to make Gen 2 and maybe NVIDIA make another one and uh, Samsung make another one. And then, of course, it will also depend on the Linux adoption because every chip maker for ARM will have to keep deciding to put to enable new features in the Linux kernel for this to work. I hope it will, because yes, I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy, as everybody knows, but I also like competition, because competition makes everything better. And if there is a, if, if maybe in five years I want to buy another laptop, I wouldn't mind it to be a uh, framework Snapdragon laptop, or, you know, some kind of a Linux laptop with, uh, with an ARM chip, but it has to be good, and it has to be good enough uh, for, it to, for there to be a continuance. So, yeah. Well, as you were speaking there, I was just thinking that my only, um, I suppose, devil's advocate to the argument that uh, Qualcomm may lose interest in a successor, uh, I mean, su- officially supporting Linux on a successor is what I mean, is then if they come out with this first version and it's ma- this hardware support is in the mainline kernel and so on, maybe the community of developers could do something similar to what Azahi is doing in other words, because each successive uh, uh, newer generation of the Apple ARM chips, in other words, the M2, the M3, and so on, are pretty much based on the same architecture, but just uh, extended a bit. Then, as long as the first generation is is supported, then potentially the developer community could do something similar. No, I, I hope it will work out. I mean, ARM is awesome in terms of, not in terms of like how closed and fragmented the architecture is, but in terms of the energy it requires to run as opposed to x86. Like, it's uh, it's something that's needed. Yeah, so certainly that's appealing, uh, it's particularly on a laptop. If something, you could just slip in your bag and go off and like travel and like, or be on a long train or plane ride and be working away or, or watching YouTube videos or, or offline media or whatever and then open it back up again once you go back in the hotel room and it still has battery life. I mean, that would be amazing. Um, okay. Maybe this is where Jake puts in the little guitar strum sound effect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to mention a nifty little extension that I installed on my computer recently. Um, as As you may know, I run Linux Mint cinnamon and uh i had never installed any spices as they call them which are essentially just gnome extensions i guess i'd never really experimented with anything like this uh i just don't i tend to just use the stock experience in any de i'm in um so g tile what is it it's basically a souped up version of window tiling and snapping uh with some nice uh key keyboard shortcuts and allows you to snap and tile windows in a more granular way on a different grid than just the two by two that you get with, you know, general generally get with the uh, window tiling. So, uh, and I actually went specifically searching for this because I, I wanted to basically tile, because I have, by the way, I have an ultra wide 
so <laughs> so I was uh, I was looking for a way to use all that screen real estate because a browser window or uh, Obsidian or Audacity or these things can all be in a third of the screen and still look okay. And when I was uh, doing stuff the other night on the computer, I wanted a way to snap things using a third of the, the horizontal space on the screen. And I discovered Gtile almost immediately when I searched for this, and it did exactly what I was looking for. It was amazing. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, I wanted to <laughs> uh, to actually kind of play around with it a little bit before the recording, just to get it fresh in my memory, uh, what I like about it. But the keyboard shortcut won't work suddenly, so sad face. But that said, uh, what I love about it, though, is for anyone who has not used it, you basically hit Super G on your keyboard. And then it gives you like a, a very pretty context menu in the middle. The active window that you last selected, it will ask you where you want to tile it. So it, you can choose a different grid layout. So you can do like two by or three by two or six by six. You can get pretty uh, granular with it. And you just click and drag over the cells on this grid and you can tile a window in any fashion you like. Um, and it has a bunch of extra configuration you can do and some quick options you can click. So you can just tile your active window on half the screen and then tile the rest of them in a cascading kind of uh, arrangement on, on the other side or you can just like give every window an equal amount of space on the screen just the last four things you clicked on will just tile i assume that's the logic it's following but the last four things you clicked on will just go boom just we're we're in a four by four now and it has a bunch of other things you can do which is really nice and it has some nice shortcuts so you can move things around and change things on the fly I'm very much a guy that likes everything on the screen at the same time. I, I don't enjoy things hiding behind each other because then I forget about them. Unfortunately, though, the little workflow I had devised over the last few days is now ruined because I can't launch the goddamn thing. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I, I, did, I futzed around with my computer earlier on, so I probably did something wrong. So um, I wonder... Uh, just a random thought that popped into my head. Uh, I don't actually know anyone else who runs Linux Mint, um, including all three of you. <laughs> my uh, <laughs> mother is currently on Linux Mint, and she likes it. Ah, okay. So <laughs> that's interesting because I remember my own mother had a laptop, or, uh, like a it was a display model she got in some random computer shop, and uh, it was terrible. So Windows just had the fan running 100% of the time. I put Linux Mint on it, and you almost never heard the fan. Like, Linux Mint is just great. So, yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know. I want to see more love for Mint, honestly. Uh, they're just kind of plodding along, doing their thing, like, not upsetting anyone. I wouldn't say not upsetting anyone. They, they are, they can be quite controversial. Oh, do tell. So, Mint is based on Ubuntu. And there has been instances in the past where they were extremely critical about what Ubuntu does. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to that known case of, was it a Firefox Snap that... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it specifically ran Snaps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I heard about all that, yeah. But, yeah. You, like, you know, the, the problem is, so you you are kind of biting the hand that makes the thing that you are built on top of. It's It doesn't convey niceness in for me. Well, this phrase applies to all of life, but especially so in our little wor world, uh, opinions are like our souls, you know? <laughs> Everyone has one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if I listened to every time that an open source project or open source like notable person kind of had a super hot take or got annoyed about something, I mean... I mean that's ninety percent of Linux news sometimes. So yeah, I I don't mind. I I I just use the software, and if I like the software, um, I respect kind of the effort that they put into it, and I respect the way they do things. And honestly, I'm a flat pack guy, so the snaps thing doesn't bother me too much. So you know, whatever. Interesting question. Does that attitude of yours stretch out to cover every possibility? For example. Uh if, you, if there was a if there was like a really great piece of open source software created by neo Nazis, would you still use it? I knew it? you were going to say this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends. It depends on the situation. Um, if they are like 
earning money and their like their philosophy or whatever their ideology is is being spread by me using this software uh, then no but if i'm just using it personally and i don't tell anyone about it and i don't give them any money then yeah fine i'm not going to give them airtime on linux lads basically <laughs> And where I see it happening is not that necessarily somebody would come out as a neo-Nazi, but more like, you know, that was just a contrast example that I was giving. But I see uh, a lot of the time come up cases of people in the community of certain projects getting abused and the community leaders not doing anything about it. That's the kind of most common thing, like, you know, lack of moderation uh, that can be maybe interpreted as an agreement or a consent or a endorsement, or maybe not. But that's where it comes up. And then it stops being politics because it's somebody got hurt, right? Somebody got uh, kicked around on a, on a forum or something like this. So do you want to use a piece of software that was created by a community that treats their own members like this? I don't know. I don't have an answer for this. The, the reason why I bring it out is because I really enjoy politics and nobody wants to talk to them, to talk about them with me because everybody's just mm. fed up with that. But uh, yeah, that is, there, are, there are a lot of questions. It's not black and white, obviously. It's, it's uh, people, so it's more complex than any tech can ever be. But uh, it's an interesting question, at least for me. I think that, yeah, you, you kind of hit the key distinction there. If someone is being harmed actively, if someone is doing harm to someone else, then that's obviously where I draw the line. And then I won't use what you make and I will actively try and avoid anything you're involved with. Like that's, you know, if you're just kind of shitty towards other people on purpose, then no, that's obviously a, a line in the sand. One thing I have to note, I, I just was rewinding the conversation back in my head. I by In no way am I trying to say that Linux Mint, which is the project that we started with, is doing anything like this. There's no evidence of that at all. Linux Mint, when I say doesn't convey niceness, I'm only aware of their attitude towards Canonical, when they disagree with Canonical, and they can be quite sharp in the way they say it. Mm. That Their community is, I'm being told, one of the most welcoming and useful places online especially for people who just want a fucking computer to work and don't <laughs> want to be bothered about how it does things I, I thought of an example earlier on that should illustrate my point a little better so it's like let, let's say for instance uh, linux mint they have an opinion on how you should do software you know and they and they took action based on that opinion i'm like okay whatever you know that's fine that that's that's none of my business that's their choice it's their project however uh, software where they put in an option to say put in your gender pronouns and people kick up a stink about it and it's like uh why don't you uh you're putting your like left-wing progressive shit in our in our software and and like they, they they make a big fuss about it it's like you don't have to use it like just shut up you know <laughs> if, that if you, option is not for you yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's there for the people who want to use it you know and it's, so, it's just a nice considerate thing to do yeah it's like some people want this so we gave it to them so shut the fuck up like you know <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want it that's fine i can't change your mind but whatever yeah just to sum that up that's basically my my, my whole take on on opinions and software colliding you know it's you know don't don't make a bigger deal out of things than you need to um but it's half the fun. Uh, only we can go from t speaking about Linux Mint to t speaking about... <laughs> I was right, going to say the same we, thing. We got right, Right-wing people who, who get up in arms because there's a gender choice on a forum. <laughs> I mean, it, it oh is thinking laterally, right? Uh, or is something. <laughs> something. It, it sucks that that does happen, though. That we are talking about it means that it has happened and that sucks i think i mean like it, of course that's the thing I, I don't like to shy away from these things either i mean they are out there they do happen um and i know it's not a podcast about culture and politics but you know we're forced to talk about it sometimes because you know i don't i don't like to see that happen like i, I want this to be a community where everyone just just gets along and does their thing and and like it just really it's just a pet peeve it's just a bugbear of mine when people make a bigger deal out of things than they need to uh it's like it's like okay whatever if you're the biggest fucking racist on the in the planet i i don't like just shut up about it i don't care i can't change your mind it's none of my business like just don't make it other people's problem you know um that's kind of it like you know use the software be quiet 
Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, if if we if we're if we're of the opinion that we're like going to oh I'm going to shut down this conversation because that that guy is a right wing conservative, then like mm. we'd never interact with anyone in the community because everyone comes to this community from different walks of life. I mean. At the Ubuntu Summit, I, I'm not going to name a particular name, but uh, I've heard that there's there's one guy who's like very conservative and likes his guns and everything like that, and I, was, I had a perfectly pleasant conversation with him, had a couple of beers, and we we're chatting about Linux, and no political stuff didn't even come up. But in my mind, I was, just, I was like, I, I wonder, is he going to be the person who's going to ram these political opinions down my throat? And he wasn't, so... That's very true. That's always only me. I really like politics, and nobody wants to talk about them. So I do ram them people's throat, down people's throat, <laughs> because I can't make small talk. Like, can you imagine how fucking frustrating it is when you have three fucking hobbies: politics, Linux, and tangentially religion? Like, nobody wants to talk to you at parties because <laughs> you can't maintain a conversation about uh, uh, the great or the lesser Kardashians or. Or or uh, the latest sports ball results, you know, like what what am I meant to do? Uh, so uh, sorry, guys, but yes, there will be politics in this podcast as long as I'm able to open my mouth and express a more or less coherent thought. I definitely understand where you're coming from there. Um, I am the same. Like I'd prefer to talk about like the future of the Russia NATO relations to a random stranger than like how the weather is. Um, I, I must, I must like, I much prefer to just get straight to a very specific topic. And, you know, I don't like to talk about things that don't matter. Time is short. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I get your point. There is too much drama in the Linux, uh, in the Linux world. And a lot of it is unnecessary. Uh, and everywhere. There is too much drama everywhere. And a lot of it is unnecessary. If people were just a bit more tolerant and just, Shut the fuck up. Uh, don't <laughs> yes. let other people live. Huh? Don't be an ass. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, Mike, don't be an ass. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not telling you not to be an ass. You're fine. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, Point taken. Ideally, only one rule would be necessary on the internet. Don't be an ass. But yeah. there be are asses, each other. and they're going to ignore that rule. Wheaton's Law. What can we do? Well, what can yeah. we? There, there is a lot of we can do. Codes of conduct, moderation, discussing things that are not okay, and that all happens. That's why sometimes I open my Mastodon feed and uh, it looks like there is a full-on culture war going on every other Tuesday. But that's just because it's necessary. Because there are a lot of people who who need to work together because that's how open source open source works. And the only way people seem to learn culture norms or how to cooperate is by doing it wrong, discussing it, and hopefully doing it better next time. So a lot of these discussions, tedious and annoying as they might be, are actually necessary, and people sometimes learn from them. Sometimes they know, and they don't, and that's sad. But, well, what can we do? A small thing that was tangentially related, as we're talking about Macedon, is there uh, is an account on Macedon that is called uh, Macedon Migration. And uh, on this person's bio, it says, oh, I talk about simple tri- tips and tricks about uh, joining Mastodon, yada, 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 which is why I, I started following them in the first place. Also, sometimes other opinions might be uh, shared. I'm like, OK, no problem. Uh, but then over the last couple of weeks, it's pretty much all been political comments. And despite the fact that the account is literally called Mastodon Migration. It's like, this name of the, the freaking account, it's all anti-Trump stuff. And I'm not saying that I don't necessarily politically disagree with the statements. I'm like, but your account is called Mastodon Migration, but you seem to be giving very little helpful tips and tricks about migrating to Mastodon. <laughs> so I ended up, end, ended up unfollowing them because of that reason, because I was like, uh, I mean, mm. if if you called your thing, um, like, I, I post anti anti Trump memes or whatever. I'm like, sure. If I'm of that opinion, I may follow you or may not follow you. But like, don't give political opinions by stealth. It's it's no, like the world point, is though. just a series of real life hell divers memes. <laughs> that is that is a that's a good point though. Sometimes people, not me obviously, but sometimes people want to just get away from that kind of shit because it seems to be everywhere and just have a conversation about anything else. And that probably is increasingly more difficult because uh, the world's just going to shit. 
everything's becoming more and more polarized, it seems. Yeah. And if you noticed it in the two decades you've been on this uh, on this little planet of ours, <laughs> then it must be a really rapid process. Yeah, like I ha- like it's it's quite interesting to think that it, how gradually all this happens. Um, and I want I want to preface this by saying that like doing this podcast and being in this fast world, this is I always saw this as my refuge from all that stuff, you know. Because what I find when you go to Linux events is that it's incredibly easy to talk to anyone about anything. Um, because there's just, I don't know, there's a vibe you get in this community that you just don't get in many other places. You can just be yourself, use all the big words you like, <laughs> and talk about all the nerdy shit you like, and people will nod and go, oh yeah, okay, cool, yeah, that's interesting, I like that. You know, <laughs> and they won't just glaze over or take the piss out of you or something. Um, so... It's it, it's just nice. Like I always liked that kind of constructive kind of attitude that everyone has in, in this community, and they, they never really get too fired up about things. And uh, unless they, unless I don't know, you use snaps or whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, on that on that vein, part of the reason why I became enamored with this community is you could be out with your nerdiness. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't have to mask so much, you know. Um, But, oh yeah, my original point was, I I just want (laughs) to... Amalith, uh, you would have loved the 90s, I think, actually. Um, Because I remember (laughs) during the 90s and the early 2000s, and when I left school, it was like, everything is fine. (laughs) You know? (laughs) It's like, it's like... Nothing is wrong. I mean, there was the Iraq War. That was, like, our main thing that we really didn't like. And that was it. You know, from no, no, in no, my no, world no, no, anyway. No, no. I don't know about anyone else. There was other bad shit happening. There definitely was, but we only knew about the Iraq War. That was the main thing, and we were like, "No war in Iraq," and we like walked out of school and everything, and and uh, stuff like that. But but other than that, you could leave school. It was like you can have any job you want, and you will get paid lots of money for it, and you will get a cheap apartment, and everything will be fine. You know, <laughs> and you can get educated for nothing. The world's a shit show right now. Well, it's continuously always been, except in the 90s, we had a bit of a more rosy outlook. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the curtain fell and we were going, well, actually, it's probably just, we were going to Europe and to the world. And we had, you know, there was, the, the cranberries were new and uh, uh, you two were on the top of their power. And uh, that's the, like the mid 90s, I think. <laughs> and uh, you had a lot of great music, you know, Nirvana wasn't classical music as it is now, although Kurt Cobain died quite, far, quite, quite, quite early on, actually, before I started paying attention to any of this stuff. And at this point, I'm just rambling about things. But if you looked at my <laughs> YouTube music playlist, you would see that it's super random, but mostly the 90s. Uh, yeah, the uh, 90s music in, in the UK and Ireland um, was just a blur. Hey, okay. Yeah, I got that. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, like where I'm going with all this, though, is with what we do, uh, open source software, Linux, etc. What I see happening in the future is maybe a decline of the system we have at the moment. Um, Be that violent or not, I don't know. Uh, But I think we're in for some big changes in the next 10 years. And I think like that open source software, Linux, everything associated with that is going to play a big part in that because it's it's very accessible to the average person. So I think we will see quite a lot of that in the future. I think it's uh, we're we're only seeing the beginning, to be honest. Um, that might be rose tinted glasses, but I think we're we're in for some good stuff in the next ten years concerning FOSS, anyway. Yeah, so that was a very deep episode, I, I think. <laughs> I think we all need to go have a lie down after that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Amalith and Jake are organizing a book club. Tell us more about that. Uh, what sort of books to start with? The first book we're going to read is How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy by Jenny O'Dell. And the rough plan is to read some amount of the book every week, we haven't decided how much yet, and a discussion leader will create a new thread on this book's mailing list that anyone can reply to, or not, lurkers are welcome, and we'll just keep doing that until we finish the book. 
And then once we're finished with the book, that mailing list will be closed, no new posts, and we'll create a new list once we've decided on the next book. So the the goal with that is allowing people to briefly and easily drop out if they're not interested in the next book. That sounds interesting. Um, Does sound interesting, yeah. Yeah, I like I like that idea of like an online asynchronous book club. Uh, that's I haven't actually come across that idea before. That's cool. The whole goal is making it very low commitment. But yeah, anyone's welcome to join, lurkers included, who don't intend to actually participate and just want to read the discussions. Uh, I'm going to hold a, a little suggestion up to the camera. It's backwards because it mirrors it, but maybe you can read backwards. It's, it's forwards it's, it's, for us. It's, the age of yeah. surveillance oh. capitalism. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah exactly the age of surveillance capitalism by uh, Shoshana Zuboff. Um, admittedly, I haven't finished it. I've I've read a bit of it, but not much. I will get around to that at some point. I'm just a really bad reader lately. So am I. So maybe I'll join this. I, I don't have a, much experience with mailing lists, so honestly. <laughs> I, I've been reading much less than I want to, and part of my thinking with creating this book club is giving me some incentive and accountability to continue and stick with reading regularly. Mm, okay. That sounds really great. Um, Yeah, I may join myself, actually. I wish you told me about this before <laughs> so I could act like <laughs> well, I knew what you were talking about right now. <laughs> at the time of recording, it's still not organized and finalized and everything, uh, but this should be published in about a month and we'll figure it out between now and then. The page you can go to for information about the book club is secluded.site slash book club with no dash, no underscore, nothing in there. So um, I actually was also going to mention something like that maybe on the next episode but since you mentioned this uh i think i'll uh i'll put it out there um so i've been really interested in the idea of streaming uh recently and i just kind of like it it's almost like a live podcast and i just think it sounds quite fun so uh i will probably just do it on twitch so the candidates that i have chosen for what i will stream is creating some live blender models scripting in godot game engine or playing the video game Stellaris. So one of those three things. I haven't decided yet. I think playing Stellaris is obviously a lot easier because you're playing a game. But um, I have been getting into Blender and Godot quite a bit recently. And I'm not good at these programs. I'm not good at like creating things in them. I'm, I'm definitely very intermediate. But uh, I think it could be fun because it could be a two-way thing. People could come in the chat and give me suggestions for what I could do or how to fix tr troubleshoot issues or do do what I want to do. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like uh, competency porn, as they call it, you know, where I'm really good at it and I'm showing everyone else how good I am at it because I am not. I'd, literally, I'd, I'd really like to see the, uh, the Blender run. That's something that I'm interested in. Mm. So, uh, yeah, whenever you listen to this, um, I might have already started doing it by the time this goes out. Uh, but um, if if you have any suggestions or whatever you'd like to see, let us know. Show at linuxlads.com or in our Telegram group, um, linuxlads.com slash Telegram. And you can go to linuxlads.com slash contact to see all of our details and all of our individual Mastodon handles will be uh, on the website as well. The one time I did the most perfect segue into our contact details. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was like absolutely perfect. <laughs> that was a bloody long recording. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm at one hour, eight minutes at the moment. <laughs> we, we came into it with no clue what we were going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our strength, isn't it? I mean, we just start out with two random bits of news, and it develops into <laughs> into culture war, politics, and the state of the planet. And wow, okay, uh, uh, and it's it's probably going to be a twenty minute episode at the end of it. Yeah, the arc we followed was just spectacular. Like it was, <laughs> I love this podcast so much. Um, okay, okay, I'm stopping recording. Oh well, I haven't said goodbye yet. Oh, we we have okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did that all wrap. I'm sorry. So I'll just do a brief like.
Okay, so that's it for this week. Um, we will see you again in two weeks exactly because we're sticking to our schedule really well. So thanks for listening and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. Okay, now I can stop recording. <laughs> Fourth wall closed. <laughs>